Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are talking about short lenders increasing and unshareholder shorts being fined and many more in this video. First, we can take a look at this. Breaking new AMC filing, Vanguard discloses 10% ownership in AMC. They're loaning those shares out, attempting to counter retail investors. Retail will win. So what we're seeing right now is again, Vanguard's position in AMC. And in fact, they have actually increased their holdings in AMC once again. Something that we should know is that Vanguard is obviously infamous for lending out shares towards the short sellers. The reason why they do this is because they get to win on both sides. Now, for them, it doesn't matter if AMC squeezes or not. They will obviously make a big, big profit if AMC were to squeeze, but they also don't mind just making a steady profit by lending out their shares. And that's what we are seeing. And something else to be understood is that it is very likely that Vanguard are working with the short sellers in order to rehypothecate the shares because Vanguard will rather keep the institution institutions in life as opposed to obviously help out the retail and so with them seeing the increase in share ownership obviously firstly it shows that we are still getting volume in at AMC but it's also understanding how these volume are being lent out but more importantly is understanding whether or not these shares are real but on some other uh, factors you can see Vanguard buy shares and we get big short attacks again would we'll assume they're loaning those out plus rehypothecation we stay we win come at me bro I'll take all commas and you can see fidelity has started asking me again to lend my shares i prompt each time i log in to my account now firstly understanding what rehypothecation is essentially with one singular share you can actually use it multiple times to short against amc and that's how all of these synthetics and naked shorts have obviously been created and vanguard is one of the biggest supplier of that but on the other hand it's understanding that right now we're seeing firms asking uh, retail investors to lend out shares again just like you guys can see here. And what we can also see is Weeble has implemented pop-up windows each time you start the app. It says by clicking here, you agree to share lending at all terms and conditions. They only care about making themselves as much money as possible. So you can see with multiple different brokerages right now, we're seeing this options where they're asking you to lend out your shares. Remember at one point, and it's still very likely it's right now, is that AMC were the most sought after shares. We knew that with the AMC cost of borrow, and we knew that with the demand for AMC shares, one of the biggest reasons is because they need these shares to obviously short and suppress AMC. And so with the fact we're seeing it from Fidelity, with the fact we're seeing it from Weeble, shows again that right now we are in a very good position as retail investors because the fact they need our shares, the fact they need us to lend our shares out means that they're struggling to suppress AMC right now, that they want to obviously borrow real shares. And that's the most important aspect we need to take away from this. Comment down below if you guys are in your brokerages is asking to lend you your share. Remember, you can always turn off share lending off. And with that, you obviously don't lend these shares out and they can't be used to rehypothecate to then short against us. And again, we are focusing on real shares and why does real shares matter? So a big part of the retail investor base is that we bought in at very early times. So when we bought in, it's very likely that the majority of our shares or in fact, 100% of our shares were real shares of amc these are the shares that can be used to short multiple times over and if they don't get lent out they obviously can't use these shares and again vanguard obviously holds a proportion of those real shares as well why is this important and you can see can you define what you mean when you say unshareholders so every failure to deliver results in a matching failure to receive if a broker trades to buy your stock but fails to receive they take your money give you an iou and you are an unshareholder you hold an entitlement not a share now we've already seen this with mmtrp we've seen this with amc we've seen this with gme essentially they just give you the number you see on your screen you own x amount of shares but if you were to deep dive into the platform into the um, security into the database of these brokers what you can actually see is there are no shares there which is under your name what you have is just a number on the screen because they don't actually have these shares and that's what we know with the synthetics and the naked shorts that's obviously being created now here is the important part like we talked about if you bought into amc at an early time you would have a share that's actually real that belongs to you and therefore you are a shareholder as opposed to the unshareholder now these are the shares that we've seen where if lent out can be used to rehypothecate to then short against amc so that's why these shorts 
processors desperately want your shares because we know that every time we buy up the shares now because of the fact that the flow has already been bought up we already holding on to our shares it's very likely we are buying in to synthetic shares which makes you again unshareholder now it doesn't mean that when amc goes up we won't make any money from these synthetic shares it just means that we don't actually have a share essentially we have an iou we hold an entitlement and not a share but by holding a share you have the power to obviously then uh, have more uh, leverage obviously shorts can use it to have rehypothecate to short against you but by not lending it out you're also putting shorts in a very bad position and if you were to buy up synthetics obviously then you will make the shorts pay up more money in the long run as always none of this is ever financial advice so do take a second of salt make sure you do your own due diligence and research furthermore let's take a look at this so that our system opportunity to handle even more of Wall Street's trading with implications of struggling banks and brokerages around the world. The goal is to offer such firms a white label trading service that will deal with customers while Citadel Security manages the guts of their trading desk, including technology analytics and order execution. Now, this is possibly one of the most ridiculous things that I have seen. Essentially, what it is, is just basically Citadel taking up more of the trading space. And in this time, they're taking up analytics and order execution. So the technology is something that they already have obviously have access to, whether it's the, with the algorithms or other technologies. But having access to analytics, having access to the order execution, they obviously now will have even more power in the market. Now, we already know how firms with more power end up obviously abusing that power, but if they don't control it well, they will actually go bust. So you can look at this as a double-edged sword. Now, I still think it's ridiculous that they are doing this in the first place, but what it means is that if they're not controlled well and they continue to exploit, continue to abuse, when it blows up, it will blow up twice uh, You know the impact it would normally have and it will just put citadel in a very very bad place another reason why this is bad and we can see it with another firm citigroup fined another 135.6 million for continued bad books and inability to manage its own going risk we see citigroup has made insufficient progress imitating its problems with data quality management and failed to implement compensating controls to manage its ongoing risk now bear in mind citadel uh, or citigroup doesn't have the access like citadel wants to have where it's um, again more access to analytics and all the execution and even with that they are failing with um, ongoing risk they are failing with data quality management so you can see how when the power of these firms gets bigger the more likely they are to abuse the more likely they are to be corrupt and that's why we need more strict regulation in this place but you can see how this is obviously already going bad now Citigroup again one of the short sellers of AMC and we know that they are failing to manage their ongoing risk and it isn't surprising to see this because we already know with their synthetics of amc the brazilian adr shares which i've seen in the past with their increased exposure to amc shorts whether it's shares wherever it's put these are all factors that contribute to the ongoing risk and enlarges these risk exposure that they have and like i said with Citigroup, the fact they don't have that access, the fact they are not growing as big uh, in terms of what Citadel wants to do, that they are already failing to do this, you can see how if Citadel were to increase their liquidity and capital, can also see another bigger problem. Obviously, that's not our problem. The problem that we will suffer is with the suppression that we have seen, but once they can't suppress us anymore, that's when the problem will enlarge and that's when all of these firms, all of these banks will go down and that's when obviously what we talked about with the transfer of wealth from these firms from these one percent to the retail that's when it's going to happen furthermore you can see how this is why you see firms whether it's in china whether it's in south korea in europe that they are struggling you can see here more on china's crackdown on short selling and algorithmic trading China's security regulator announces new restrictions on short selling and tighter scrutiny of high frequency trading to stabilize a declining stock market. Now, when you take a look at the financials of you know hedge funds, of banks, of these large firms in terms of China, South Korea, you can see that they are not doing well. And when you see what the factors is, what the common factor is, whether it's in Europe, whether it's in Asia, is the fact that they all have strict regulations on short selling and algorithmic trading all of which are 
used to again manipulate the market we already know with short selling again with abuse of naked short selling how is damaging to the retail how is damaging to the market with algorithmic trading in this case high frequency we know how it's also damaging to the market as well as they can inflate the volume as they can they can inflate their liquidity and obviously spoof different stocks and you can see this is exactly what we want the us market to also implement as well because when you have these factors limited you see banks and citadel and, and short firms to not actually enable what they normally do and not make the profit they normally do because they can't manipulate the market and that's what we want as a fairer market and guys thanks for watching i'll catch you guys next time